today on Have a Knife Day, we have our special guest. That would be uh, Jet, Knife Cat. He has come over here from my neighbor's house to hang out with me. He is our official mascot of this channel. Now, be that as it may, what we're here to really talk about today is lately I have been purchasing Gerber knives, fixed blades. I do own some uh, folding and I do have some of their multi-tools. But today we're here to talk about the uh, LMF2 infantry and how this all started out is I purchased a strong arm and I really liked a strong arm, but that opened up a whole can of worms with the fact that I bought it through Amazon. And now some of you are already moaning and I understand because there's a story behind this and that's because I purchased a bootleg, a cheap knockoff, a Tricom special, etc., etc. Be that as it may, I have a video of that, and I had a lot of the viewers say, hey, that's a knockoff, and that's great, and uh, you don't know until you know at the end of the day, right? So that led up to uh, going over and purchasing a real strong arm from a, a legitimate place. I went over to the Gerber website. So if you're going to buy these uh, knives, I suggest to you, stay away from Amazon. Don't waste your money. Uh, I know some people really don't care as long as they're getting a cheap blade. But at the end of the day, are, I mean, you're, you're not getting a Gerber and whatever stats that they might have for that knife. You have no idea what you're getting as far as blade steel, etc., etc. So go to Blade HQ, go to Knife, uh, Cent, you know, Knife Central or whatever you want to go to or go straight to the source like I did and get yourself the real deal. And with that being said, let's go ahead and look at the Gerber LMF2 infantry box. Now, what you're going to be noticing in uh, <laughs> the cat, uh, what you're going to be noticing is this box. The knockoff strong arm, the box was half the size. And the box was really flashy. It had uh, honeycombs and extra, you know, the, the sticker was on the side. And it had a bunch of extra stuff because they wanted to razzle-dazzle you and distract you from the fact that it is a knockoff. So the real deals come in a bigger box. Uh, the strong arm came in a cardboard insert. And uh, the knockoff came in a cheapy little... Uh, bubble wrap, sleeve, etc., etc. Uh, but like I said, I shall stop talking about that and <laughs> just direct you over to the descriptions for the link for that video. So we're gonna see how that goes. And remember the official box has this. You lift that up and then you would open it up. Okay, now with that being said, I'm gonna put the box off the table and I'm gonna show you the knife. Now, the big difference between the sheaths, um, this is a lot more of a rugged purpose built sheath compared to, in my opinion, the strong arm. And I'm gonna bring out a strong arm and show you the differences in a little bit. But you check this out. Uh, you have a leg strap, which is of course removable. You can open this up. Now, these here can be woven into a Molly system. Uh, my current, ge my generation of military use something called the Alice, and <laughs> our uh, LBEs, our pistol belts, uh, had these little metal clips. But today, if you look at backpacks, you'll buy, most commonly find this in the civilian world in backpacks. But when you look at military packs and you see uh, service members wearing their armor and everything, you'll notice these loops these ribbons sewn into their gear and this would weave into the molly system securing it to your gear uh, vertically or uh, well you know you mean you could wear it like this uh, you can wear it upside down uh, that's where uh, retention does come into play and uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull this out for the first time that's, that's got some retention right there. So, and there's a little bit of rattle, not too much, not too bad. 
And what we see here is it has two snaps. So you could snap it. Um, on the knockoffs, the quality of the snaps way cheaper, way cheaper. These would just snap right off very, very easily. The higher quality snaps do take effort to unsnap. And you could just snap those in for added retention, one or two, or you can fold them underneath, or gee whiz, at the end of the day, if it's yours, if you didn't want the snaps at all, well, you know, that's why God made uh, scissors. <laughs> so you'll look at this thing. Now, we're looking at this right here, and what is that? Well, that is a pull-through blade sharp. It should be out in the field. You just got done uh, doing various things. Uh, you can run your edge through here and get a bit of sharpness. Needless to say, you would have to pull apart the sheath. Now, the good thing about the sheath, now you'll notice all of the holes. So if you wanted to use a tech lock, I, I suppose you could do that if you so desire. And I'm gonna snap this here. Oh, I'm irritating him. <laughs> that's pretty funny. And that's that's the the chance you take there, kid. I'm gonna put this off to the side. And uh, let's take a look at this. That comes off there. That comes off there. Now to get this off. Do my own stunts, everyone. There you go. So there is a lot of modular uh, application to this. You can have this on the sheath, this nylon here. And uh, the quality of the nylon, it's very, very rigid, uh, very, very thick, and is of a high quality. Now, these are leg straps. So if you wanted to wrap this around your thigh, or by gosh, if you want to go full Rambo, uh, you can wrap this around your uh, calf, <clears throat> excuse me, and wear it on your calf. Be kind of fun to, you know, if this was rubberizable, gee whiz, this would make a pretty good dive knife. So there you go. This is a really heavy duty. This is rubberized. Well, yeah, look at that. Now, of course, if you took it in uh, some salt water, you'd probably not have this uh, sharpener for very long needless to say and it does look like you know if it all came down to it you probably could get a replacement query but it's a well done knife now is it ambidextrous we put it in there pull it out it is an ambidextrous sheath so for people who are left-handed well there you go i'll see this really nice butt cap here the nice texturing and all that good stuff. <clears throat> now, this comes in 50-50 straight edge to serration. Um, I've seen, uh, they did a thing on DBK, uh, Dutch bushcrafting <laughs> channel, and those crazy uh, Dutch guys in the forest with their hair on fire, uh, they have taken the strong arm, and I do believe the... Uh, the infantry here uh, and they they did a torture test to it uh, now if you're gonna you know if you have this burning desire to uh, baton through wood to make fire um, you know you might have to touch up your serrations every now and then hello buddy and go from there we're gonna take a look at the blade itself now mind you the location, the size, how much space here, where the logo is, you know, the, the Portland, Oregon, USA, the serial number is important to know where it is to avoid bootlegs. And there's the Gerber right there. I'm gonna put this back in here for a minute and set it over here to Knife Cat. Here you go, Knife Cat. That's what you get. You get to hold a knife in a sheath. There you go. He enjoys his job. So, on to what 
we want to learn built to handle the hard cuts this 10 inch fixed blade is rugged and versatile but the partially serrated blade the sheath is molly compatible and includes a blade sharpener now the specifications uh, product number is 22-01629 for those who want to know this has an msn number now what does that mean well that means if you have someone if you have a friend and a uh, supply room they could plug that number in and order you one of these knives i think that only happened once i got one of them really cheap uh leather stack handle uh, uh air force survival knives <laughs> that thing just fell right apart and immediately rifted i think that's the only thing that i got in the army that was a knife for, for, you know that i didn't directly have to pay for uh, the length is 10.59 inches weighing in at 24 ounces and it does not come with a attention hungry cat there you go because he's not hungry for anything else because i have fed this little piggy and of course it has the gerber guarantee going forward every gerber product has a story to tell the story of the lmf2 is one of resilience and resourcefulness if you're gonna lay here you gotta be you gotta be ready to have the knife on you this molly compatible knife is rugged and versatile with a personally serrated blade that can also serve as a pommel <laughs> what i i don't think that they really did a good job writing this the purpose driven knife of this stems from the experience of a former military man, Jeff Freeman, combining thoughtful design features and rescue applications. Originally designed to free an air crew from a downed aircraft, the LMF-2 is tough enough to cut through the fuselage of an aircraft and smart enough to ensure you are safe while doing it. The knife has a purposeful break between the tang and the butt cap, providing insulated protection against stray wires and absorbing any shock from hammering. This 10 inch survival knife was built to adapt to any scenario thrown at it, ensuring comfort, versatility, and safety when you need it most. And it's gotta be true because that's what it says, right? Egg, exactly. Now, I wanna do more than just read their blurbs. I went out and I found some very, very interesting stories that go along with this the sheath has a built-in sharpener and the handle is insulated for cutting through electrical cables i found the story online army sfc's that's sergeant first class for you uh call of duty people uh, diller johnson penned down in an abandoned building by insurgent gunfire in iraq came under a heavy night attack after bright lights were used to illuminate his position with his Gerber LMF2, a rugged 10-inch survival knife with an insulated handle, Johnson was able to sever a pair of 220-volt power cords without being shot, disabling the, not the lights. Under the veil of darkness, Johnson and a comrade were able to wait for reinforcements before exiting the building unarmed. Now, that's the kind of story I want to share with you. A practical application and. uh you know, people who have actually done the dirty, dirty over in interesting play places, sharing our uh, culture with them, bang, bang, et cetera, et cetera. So there is the Gerber LMF2 Infantry. And it is, oh, excuse me, kitty cat. I know, I know. Now, now, mind you, I have had this cat around knives a lot, and he still has all of his digits. So I am taking care. So, chill out. Um, it is a damn fine, good-looking knife. It has a good heft to it. You can see some jimping right here. And uh, this, in comparison to the strong arm, the strong arm has a handle, and I'm going to bring that out in a little bit. And it has something protruding. It is sharp. Now, this does come to a point, but it is a lot more ergonomic in function unlike this lay down lay down boy uh -uh, uh -uh. there you go well i'm gonna put this knife in its sheath and we're gonna pick up knife cat excuse me boy come on come here because you know come on come on this ain't cat fatty come on 
Uh, you know what they say about working with kids and animals? <laughs> I have lived at my residence for a goodly amount of time. And I have, both my wife and I have seen neighbors come and go. And then one day we get to meet the neighbors and they have this black cat. And uh, the interesting thing is, if you look at the emblem on my beret, that is a flying panther, because we're known as the Panther Brigade. So I kind of look at him as my mascot, and he's a good boy. And he likes me, besides the obvious, uh, you know, I feed him with the fact that I also probably give him more attention than, than the people who, who are his owners. So with that, being said, let's go ahead and check out the other knife. Now, this is the strong arm. Okay, once again, I want you to appreciate the size of the box, where the sticker is, where the sticker isn't, and how much more involved it is for the closure device and how minimalistic the box is, okay? Because it's important, it's important for me to share this with you. This also comes in a cardboard box. I do believe this one did too. I might have thrown it away. Um, just to let you know also, the LMF2 infantry does, excuse me kid, does come with some literature. I'll show that to you really, really quickly. And um, on the knockoffs, it, what it, whatever they put into the box has been Xerox so many times. It, it's very, very poor quality. And it shows attachment points. Uh, you can have it uh, really cool and have your handle facing down. And it explains everything. Look there, you know, he is really high speed with it around his calf. And we'll look over on this side. You can have it a rat attached to your belt, suspended from your belt, and wrapped around your thigh. And the interesting thing, uh, plexiglass punch, used as a hammer for goodness sakes, uh, converts to a spear. So when you look at these holes are lashing points to turn it into a spear. I mean, what's better a knife? A uh, spear? Yeah, no. And, of course, the integrated sharpener. I just wanted to share that with you real quick. And also, uh, I'm not going to open this up. It's got information. Da, 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 da. Now, you know why I don't have any good-looking maps? is because... Well, yeah, look at that. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. Okay, so let's take a look at the strong arm. Uh, the differences. <clears throat> Sorry about that. My allergies are going crazy. So, I mean, right off the bat, you could tell the difference in the size and the build quality of the sheath. Let me get something for you quick. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Uh, I've just had an allergy attack. <laughs> it, it's a dangerous job, but uh, you know, I, I knew that when I accepted the mission. Be that as it may. So here is the strong arm. Uh, you could definitely tell the difference between the two different sheaths. This being rubberized, really, really overbuilt. Uh, the size of all of these holes make it really good not only for the fact that you have to put these through it to secure it to the sheath proper but also at the same time you could use paracord or zip ties or what have you to uh you know gerrymander this uh to your preferred carry style it has a lot of options and i really do appreciate the rubber rubberized uh that's just nice what can i say that is really nice and then you look at, uh, maybe this is thermal plastic. You do have your attachment points 
So you can get a tech lock for this, or you can keep it on the sheet that it came with. This has, this comes off. You could wear this scout style, uh, use it with, it incorporates with the Molly system, just like this does. But you could definitely tell the difference in the quality. So we're gonna open this up. Once again, it's important to know the differences. I do like this because sometimes you need to have that little thumb assist to get it off. All right. So notice where the logo is. The very minimalistic serial number and the length of edge to handle. That's really important to know. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this out. And we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. And you can really see the difference. Uh, the lashing points, no lashing points. Uh, this is physically bigger with more ergonomics to it in certain ways. It does have this nicely rubberized textured handle. Uh, plexiglass punch. This one here, I do find that this is a bit sharp, to be honest with you. If you're over there thumbing it, that's what she said. You are going to feel that, so you might want to take some uh, sandpaper to that. But at the same time, if you do that, you're going to take off the coating. We don't want to do that. So here are the differences. The element 2. 10.59 inches, weighing in at 24 ounces. Uh, the strong arm is 9.8, weighing in at 7.2 ounces. The LMF2, lashing holes for use as a spear, rugged, versatile survival tool, two-leg strap, sheath, molly compatible, USA made, limited lifetime warranty. To compare to the strong arm, plain edge, full tang 428C steel blade. Uh, not everybody is in love with 428C. But of course, here we are, uh, people who buy things, and all we could do is ask Gerber to maybe modernize up their, their steel use, etc., etc. Uh, ceramic blade coating, rubberized diamond textured grip, striking pommel, nylon webbing for drop leg carry and secondary retention, detachable belt hoops for horizontal belt carry, snap and molly strap, made in USA, limited lifetime warranty. So, there is another knife that they put out that is, you know, in this whole kind of family of look and style. I don't think I'm going to get it. I think I'm good. Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, which one would you pick? Um, they're both very, very nice knives. I kind of like this one a little bit better this one uh, it just just the feel of it. it it definitely feels more substantial in the hand than this one I really do appreciate the the grippiness the texture of the handles I was watching a thing uh, yesterday and there's a guy who does bushcraft and he went over there and he took a belt center sander and took this off because you know he was chopping a branch with this knife and he found out this gave him hot spots. He also took this down and rounded it out a bit. Uh, not applicable for his uh, application and usage. And uh, I find that this one is, it's just really nicely done. And it kind of looks like a, like a turtle. I mean, you can always put a, take a little Sharpie, put a little smile on there, and maybe feed it some lettuce. This is a very nice knife. Gerber. Uh, some of you love them. Some of you don't. Guess what? We're existing in the same place. More for the others that do. And for those who don't, don't worry about it. There you go. That's right. So, my friends, thank you so much for coming over here and checking out uh, the two new blades. I decided to uh, incorporate uh, the differences and uh, hopefully uh, steer you into maybe a new knife purchase, or if it's not for you, maybe the strong arm is more your speed, maybe the LMF2 infantry is 
your speed, maybe if you're in the military, uh, you can go over to supply, give them the NSN number and say, hey, brud, hey brother, uh, hook me up. And they look at you and go, no, and you just go up by it yourself. And there you go. Uh, please do remember, I do have an Etsy store with Have a Knife Day and Don't Tread on Me t-shirts. Uh, I do have some stickers. I need to get some more stickers. And uh, eventually I'm going to have to invest in more challenge coins because we do have official challenge coins that are kind of like a military tradition. They're really cool. And uh, maybe on one of these future episodes, I'll show you what that looks. Um, now, if you ever want to get a challenge coin done, the initial cost is a little expensive, especially if you're not going to buy 500 of them. And that is because they have to make a die for your coin. And once that initial expense is taken care of, they are a little bit more cost effective. But I think I I was selling the ones that I had for like 35 bucks. So, but uh, they're very unique. And it, it's definitely nobody has those out there in the world because I, I helped design those. And they're just neat and part of a good military tradition. So thank you for spending time here with me today uh, from uh, me, Mr. Rexu, and uh, Jet the Knife Cat over there. Uh, thank you so much, and as always, have a knife day. Wait, before I forget. Now, I'm going to put this up here. Now, this sheath is not really conducive for wearing around daily like I like to. It's just not realistic. So I went to Etsy and I found uh, this guy's shop and he made uh, kind of sheaths for the strong arm. I'll go out and see if he makes them for the element 2 infantry also. Uh, but um, I bought this. Now, don't, don't look at this. This has a carbon fiber look to it and it is a kydex sheath. Uh, please note on the amount of attachment points that he's put on here. Uh, I got this with a tech lock. Now, there are other carry, you can get uh, clip its and all this other kind of uh, metal clips that you can go out there and buy on your own. I had this made several years ago um, just so that I could wear a knife that normally doesn't have a belt loop. And uh, this, this loop here has had a lot of knives on it. And we'll put this in here. No rattle. It's really good. The retention is great. And it was an affordably priced product. So please check him out. Uh, I usually have all of my stuff made by Black Bear Custom Kydex, but I wanted to go over and check some other stuff out. Every once in a while, I like to go off reservation and uh, get something. And he had these pre-made and it didn't take very long for me to get it. All right. And now, with that, have a nice day. Fight, we will.